welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan and I'm so excited to be spending Tuesday with you. Thank you so much as always for being here. We really appreciate you guys and I'm so excited. We have a really fun project today. But first, let's see where we have people tuning in from. Uh, Shirley, good morning to you as well. Lynn from South Carolina, I hope you're doing well. Uh, sh oh wow, it's going so fast. I can't keep up. Eve from Illinois, thank you guys so, so much. Um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and having a little bit of sunshine. We have had a lot of rain, just a lot, and um, I'm ready for some sunshine. So hopefully that's what you guys are having your way. Um, I'm going to kind of dive right into the project today. That way, if we have any questions, we can take them at the end, and it's going to be a little bit more um, involved than some of the things we do, but I think I've got it all prepped so we can get through it in the time that we have. But to show you, I have made this cute uh, fabric table. These little zippers on the side to store your pieces. So you can see all my checker pieces. I can just pull out here. And I decided that I wanted to make a checkerboard because when I was a little girl, I would play, well, first of all, I went to my grandparents' house a lot. I thought my grandparents were like the coolest people ever. And I would pay, play checkers with my grandpa in the morning. And so we would go and get donuts and then we would sit and we would play checkers at the table. And my kids, I realized I have bought them like those big outdoor checker sets, but they've never, never really played. So I thought now is the time that I will sit with them and teach them to play checkers, just like I played with my grandpa. And so I made this cute little project using this. Um, it's the Berries Charm Pack by Riley Blake. It's um, by Jill Finley for Riley Blake. It's so cute with these red, blacks, and whites. And I thought it would be a great way to show you guys that you can get this checkerboard look by using lights and darks or even just high contrast, like the red and black, um, instead of just black and white. I did go ahead and make one just out of black and white a little more traditional for you guys to see, but um, it's super, super quick and super easy. And I love that I can store the pieces here in the zippers. Um, remember if you, you know, don't have extra checker pieces, you can use buttons or whatever you have lying around, cut them out of felt. There's no bad ideas. But let me show you how we make the grid because it comes together really quickly this way. I just took two, five inch squares and I put them right sides together. I want to make sure I've got enough contrast. So I'm going to set them right sides together and then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch on opposite sides, just two sides. So let's do that first. Zoom around. To make the actual game board portion of your project, you're gonna need eight lights and eight darks or eight of each color that you're going for. And you're gonna put all of those together just like this, um, right sides together. And we're gonna just sew on both sides of all of them. So if you're making all of them, make sure go ahead and put your eight pairs together and you can just chain piece through your machine um, down one side and back up the other. But now that I've got this one ready, I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. And then I'm going to press this open. Pressing to the dark side. And I actually have a few more here that I've already sewn up that I'm going to go ahead and cut in half as well. I hope I didn't mess up that one. Looks a little wider to my eye pretty close. It's going to work. All right, there we go. Then we're just going to go ahead and press these back. And 
when I sewed mine, I went ahead and pressed them all open like this because I wanted to mix up the prints when I put them back together. If you're using solids, you don't really have to worry about mixing it up. You just have to make sure that you um, get that checkerboard effect. So now I've got a few different varieties here. And like I said, I'm just going to take um, different prints and I'm going to lay these right sides together again, but I'm going to make sure that my dark is on the top of this piece and on the bottom of this one. And you can really feel the seams nest together um, since you've pressed them all to the dark side. And then we're going to sew again on both sides, making sure that our first seam is running, what is that? horizontally and we're going to sew vertically across the, that seam on either side. So again with a quarter inch seam. And Misty, while you're sewing, I'm just going to tell people the fabric line we're using is called It's the Berries. Yes. Thank and you. it's that red and black line so it's fun contrast but like she said you can also do black and white or just high contrast you could do blue and white or green exactly. and purple if you wanted to whatever your heart desires i had once i finished all of this i was having so much fun making it um i decided that i really want to try one with just kind of like rainbow colors and white and so all the all of the dark pieces are all different colors i think it would still be really cute and my daughter would love that so much so then you can see, now that I cut this one in half, just like before, sorry, I did that without explaining, exact same thing, cut it in half. Now when I open it up, I have a perfect little four patch that is already, you know, checkerboarding for us. And we can go ahead and press this open. Just like so. And we've got several comments from eagle-eyed users. Yes, you can absolutely use this for chess as well. Ex yes. It's the I same even, board. Look, I even have chess pieces. I just ordered um, extra chess and checker pieces um, online. And so I could get a whole set. It was pretty affordable. Um, and then I can just slip them in there with my project. So absolutely, chess or checkers, whatever your heart desires. Um, so then once you have your little four patches made, you're going to arrange them so that you get your dark light, dark light, and you're gonna put four, four patches across by four, four patches down. So essentially, what does that equal? 16 by 16 of your little squares if you're working with individual two and a half inch squares, which is what this would amount to um, using the method. Eight by eight. 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 Is it eight by eight? No. Yeah, it's eight by eight. No. Math is hard in the morning. It's fine, you guys. <laughs> anyway, eight by eight. Um, so four of each of your four patches across and down. And so that will give you a grid that looks like this. And you can see here, the first thing I did is I went ahead after it was all sewn together and I added my borders, my uh, inner border, this white one to frame it up, uh, measures an inch and a quarter. And the outer border is two and a quarter. Remember, you can make this whatever size you want. You would just have to kind of adjust your measurements later on. Um, this works out, the reason I did it this size anyway, is with my seam allowance, I could get the strips that I need to finish the project, I could get two still out of the width of fabric if I was very careful cutting off my selvage. So keep that in mind, um, and it made it really simple. Um, as far as this fabric goes, obviously the white, it's just a couple of strips of the white, so less than a quarter yard that you need. And then to finish the whole top here, um, you need about a yard of black, and that includes your binding. And so that also includes, if, I don't know if you noticed here, but our pockets are fully lined. We have no raw edges, and so that includes that as well. If you want um, the same backing, that's going to be about another three quarters of a yard, half a yard maybe, but it's going to be close. So that should give you plenty of fabric. And again, you can use whatever you have in your stash. Exactly. You absolutely can, especially on the back. Nobody's really going to see the back. So now that we have this ready to go, um, I like to orient my long border pieces, the ones that have the final seams. That's what I made either end of my board. 
I don't know if that's actually correct <laughs> as far as the layout, but I figure it just has to be opposites, right? And so it works out. Um, so then next up, I'm gonna prep my zipper. And to do that, the first thing we wanna do, um, I'm just using, I think these are 14 inch zippers. Yes, it's a 14 inch zipper, plus you've got that little bit of extra on either side. Um, and I kept all of that on for this project. I didn't trim it off. And then I cut a strip out of my black fabric, um, an inch and a half wide by four and a half inches. And this gives you plenty of extra overhang, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually extend either end of this zipper. So let's sandwich this together just like so. And you can see it's even a little wider than my zipper and I did that on purpose. I just wanted to give myself plenty of wiggle room and I did go ahead and pin to make sure it stayed where I wanted. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide this one down and then I wanna make sure that the little stops stay lined up. And so I'm gonna hold those in place and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this end and just go ahead and have both sides ready and sandwiched together. And then we're gonna place a pin here as well to make sure that everything stays where we want it and the head of our zipper is moved out of the way. So now when you take this to the machine, you can feel um, where the stops are. And so you could switch out and put on a zipper foot if you want. I have one right here. Um, but the, the foot that comes on the Jane is already very narrow. Um, so I didn't really need to. So I'm going to keep my regular foot on. And I'm just going to feel and make sure that those stops are right on the outside edge of my foot. And I am going to go ahead and backstitch here just to make sure this is nice and secure. And I've sewed over the zipper and backstitched again. And then I'm going to take my pin out and make sure that that looks good. And it does, you can see I'm a little distance away from those stops, but because this is gonna be fully lined, I'm not worried about that at all. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn around and do the other side. Feel for those. You can even fold this back and you can kind of eyeball again where those stops are if you are having trouble feeling it. There we go. Right across there. And then we're just gonna check. And that looks really nice. And then we can zip this back up for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and press these flat. And you're using that really cute colored zipper, but you could use any kind of zipper. Any we have zipper. I just thought it was fun to have kind of this pop of color. Um, so we went with this red zipper. And we have several zippers. We have a bunch of black zippers listed in the description below. Yeah. Because that's a nice, easy one, but you can use just about anything you Any got. color. Whatever matches your fabric, or if you don't want the zipper to stand out, um, use one that blends in, that's totally okay. But I thought for teaching you guys, it would be better to make sure we had some good contrast. So I wanted to make sure you could see. So now that I have this um, pressed over, pressed in half so that we've made this extension, I am gonna go ahead and cut off my excess fabric. So this is just as wide as my zipper. And so my zipper measures about an inch wide. It's a little shy of an inch, but I'm gonna go with an inch because that's an easy round number. And then I'm just gonna trim off this side and turn it and trim up this side. There we go. And do the same on the other end. You can move that zipper head if it's in the way of your ruler. Don't make it too hard on yourself. Cut off that side. This one is pretty close, I can tell but we're just gonna shave a little bit off. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna measure the width of your board. And mine works out to be right at just shy of 21 inches. 
And so like I said, that's the number I was kind of looking for because I knew that I could get that out, I could get two strips out of the width of fabric. And so that's what I was shooting for. And so then I cut a five inch strip, I actually cut two five inch strips because you need um, two of these pieces for each zipper. And it, it's, I cut them down to five by 21. And so I've got two five by 21 pieces. And then I also want to make sure that the, this zipper, remember I told you we've got some extra length, we're gonna cut this down um, to five by 20, I mean <laughs> to 21 inches long, not five, to 21 inches long as well. So I'm just going to kind of center this up on my mat. I need to see my numbers. And it, help, it helped me to have a ruler. So I knew I've got, I've got about 14 inches of zipper showing, which means I've got seven inches on either side. So this is my middle point right here. And if I need it to measure 21, then it needs to go 10 and a half in each direction. And so I'm gonna measure over 10 and a half inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. I'm gonna make sure my little ends are lined up because those are separate pieces and they can get kind of tricky. So I'm gonna trim that off. And then same on this other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and a half. And this is pretty forgiving. So don't stress too much over it. But then I know that my zipper portion is going to match the length of the strips that I've made. And so now what we're gonna do is we are going to sandwich our zipper inside um, two of these five by 21 inch pieces. And I did leave this one a little long just in case, so I can go ahead and cut that down as well. So we've got, this is on the nine, so I need to come to the 30. So let's go ahead and trim that off just so we don't have any trouble stitching this. There's that one. Go ahead and double check this one. And guys, if you're, some of you are just tuning in, we're making a chessboard checkerboard yes. with pockets for your pieces. If you're just joining us, this is what we're making. So it's got a little chess or checkerboard and we're making these finished lined pockets um, that will go on either side to hold your pieces. Thanks for reminding me, Liz. Yep. So we're just getting to the zipper portion. So we've added the ends to our zipper and now we're going to sandwich this between our two five inch pieces. And so I wanna make sure you guys can see, I'm just gonna lay this on one edge and I am gonna pin this whole thing. And then we're just gonna put this other piece right on top of it. And then we're just gonna sit here at our machine and we're gonna pin this down to make sure it stays in place. And um, remember, our zipper is about an inch wide. And so I just made sure that I was about three quarters of an inch down um, when I put my pin so I knew it would be out of the way when I started stitching. So then we've got this one all lined up. We're just gonna keep working our way down. This is really the trickiest part and it's not hard. It just, you wanna take your time. And you're feeling with your hands for the zipper there too. I am, exactly. You can actually, I don't know if you can see this, Isaac since it is black, black is sometimes hard to see, but I can feel that zipper right there. And I'm just placing my pin right on the other side of it because I'm gonna be sewing on this side towards you guys. Um, and so that way I know I'm not gonna have any pins in my way when I go to stitch. Whoops. And a lot of folks are asking, we don't have a written pattern for this one because we're showing you a couple of techniques. This yes. will be available in a replay. Yes, you can always go back and watch. Um, and maybe someday we'll have a pattern. <laughs> but my ideas come too quickly, or maybe too last minute, I don't know which one. Um, and so I just share them with you when I've got them. It's just such a cute, fun project that makes such a great gift. Yes, it's and definitely something fun a, to play with yeah. yourself. 
Um, Patricia Ramsey is asking, could you use clips instead of the pins? You absolutely could. The only problem that I see, well, actually, to be totally honest, I think that you would have a harder time with clips because they're going to be, the clips will be on your stitch side. I guess if you just keep unclipping as you go, for me, I just really want this to be secure. So I have clips and I choose to use them a lot, but on this project, pins was my, my option. And so now I've got this lined up all the way down to the end. I did pin all the way to the end. And because the zipper's in there, sometimes it likes to slip. So we're just gonna take our time and go nice and slow. I am making note that my zipper head is down here. And so we are gonna have to move that out of the way since I'm not using um, the zipper foot on this. And also, <laughs> let's note, I'm using white thread so you guys can see, but I would be matching my thread to the background color. Um, so keep that in mind. And so I am just stitching a quarter inch down, just a little bit scant. And as I'm approaching um, the machine, I can still feel that zipper is just on the outside edge of my presser foot. So I know it's not getting in the way of my needle. Make sure you go with your gut. If you feel like your seam is getting too wide, um, pause, because you don't want to be sewing over any zippers and breaking a needle. But we're just taking our time. And my fabric is wanting to rumple a bit against that zipper, so I'm just using my fingers to guide it back into place, going nice and slow. And so I actually am gonna take a minute here. I'm gonna take a few more stitches, but I'm getting really close to that zipper head. So now that I've put a few stitches in, I'm gonna pop out this pin and I can open this up here. Isaac, I don't know if you can see this close, but here's my zipper head right here. And so I'm actually going to slide this past. If I can get a hold of it, just a second. There we go. So I'm gonna, you have to kind of work it. If you lift your presser foot, just make sure you hold your project kind of in place. And now I've zipped that pass out of the way and I'm gonna line this back up and put my presser foot back down and not worry about that zipper being in my way for the rest of this seam. That is an awesome trick because that zipper head is really the trickiest part of putting on the zipper. It's getting that zipper head out of the way, exactly. It's not hard. You just have to take your time. And I want you guys to see this because it's a really apparent, apparent with my white thread. This does not look perfect. These stitches are not perfect and I'm not gonna die over it because it is not gonna matter. Um, I promise you, no one's gonna see this, especially because we're going to press this flat and all those stitches are gonna be hidden inside. And so really the goal is, you can see here, Sorry, Isaac, I'm moving all around, making it hard on you. But the goal is now we're gonna fold this back and you can see, even though the, my, my seam was a little wobbly, when I press this back, it's gonna lay nice and even and it's gonna look great. Um, and if I had black thread on here, the next step once you've pressed this would be to go ahead and take a top stitch seam to hold this down. I'm not gonna do that with the white. It just, I mean, you could if you wanted contrast. I'm, I'm just not doing it. So now we're gonna press this all flat. Make sure we don't have any rumples, but I love this method because it makes, um, makes it so you don't have any raw edges that are inside your pocket, which I think is such a fun trick. So now we're just pressing from both sides to make sure we get um, this as smooth as we can. See, going back here, sometimes it wants to fold on one side, so I just use the iron to kind of roll those seams back, make them behave. There we go. And then your piece should end up matching just perfectly because you've sewn it and pinned it in place. And like I said, now I would go ahead and top stitch along that edge, but we're gonna skip that step just so I don't have to change my thread. And now let me show you how we attach this to 
our project. So remember, like I said, I like to use these long sides of my border as the side I'm working on. I just think it looks nice and clean. And so the next step, let me get my brain right here, is we are going to, so this is how we need it to fit into the project. So I'm going to turn this face down, just like so, and just like we pinned on this side of the zipper, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time, we're going to sandwich it with a six inch by 21 inch strip. Somehow I cut all of these too long, so let me trim this one down too. We're all human around here, guys. That's right. When you're using those zippers, that's, does it matter if it's a metal zipper or a nylon zipper? Oh, I don't think so. I don't see why it would. The nylons are easier to sew through, but yeah. since we're not sewing through, I think you could use either one. You could one. use either one, absolutely. We're trying our best to not sew through any zippers. That's the goal. <laughs> so I think you would be fine uh, with either one. And so now you can see I've got my zipper side down, um, so right side facing my project, and then I've got my six inch by 21 inch piece, and we're gonna put that on top, and we're gonna take a minute, and we're gonna pin that as well exact same method as before just lining up our ends taking the time to make sure that it's all going to cooperate lost my pins there they are misty while you're pinning mm -hmm. um, as you've been pressing what do you have any like different iron setting because you're using a zipper um that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I probably should, but I don't. I just try really hard to not spend too much time by the zipper. And so even when I'm working and rolling those edges, I kind of try and make sure the iron is staying on the fabric and not on the zipper itself. But that is a great question. We don't want any uh, melted zippers to our irons. That would be a sad day. It would. One right. of the other things that we're seeing is some great ideas for how to go use these out in the wild. So some people are saying, roll it up, take it camping. Yes, absolutely. This is absolutely one you can take outside and throw down on the yard. You can throw yes. it down on the living room floor. I it love that. It is very that. versatile. That makes me so happy. And it's just such a great size, too, with the borders and everything added on. Um, it's, it's great, like you said, to throw in an RV if you're um, on the go and it's easy to store and it's something that you've handmade with love which always makes it just a little bit better don't you think absolutely all right just a couple more pins here just making sure everything is working out how we want it so i've pinned that all the way down the side um, and now we are going to do the exact same thing we did on the other side of the zipper. My zipper head, I can tell, is at the top this time, um, which means I'm gonna have to move it out of my way, and then once I go a little bit, then I'm gonna have to pull it back up. But we can do that. Okay, so then now, we're gonna get that zipper out of the way. Have to kind of just move through your layers and take out a pin if it's in your way. There we go. There's Now I can see my zipper head. So I'm gonna pull that down a little ways and then put my pin back in. Should have thought of that before I got started, but that's okay. I am gonna pin that again. Just like I said, because that zipper tends to cause the fabric to want to shift, and so I just don't want to have to fight that hard. There we go. Taking a few stitches, and now I'm going to open that back up, slide the zipper back up out of the way. And again, like I said, if you need to lift your presser foot, just kind of hold your project in place so that it cooperates with you. This one is really not wanting to slide. I can see it. So let's just take our time because we don't want to break it. Okay. 
I am lifting my needle because that was kind of holding it down and making it hard to move. And it's okay, we can line it back up if we need to. There it went. It just didn't like where the needle was. And that's all right. So now I'm just gonna line up. And this is one instance where using that contrasting thread makes it really easy. I can see where I need to go ahead and put my needle down again. Now that I know my zipper head is out of the way, I can go back to just coasting down that side whole thing but let's go ahead and flip this out so you can see how this works and so you can see when we flip this all back over these the seam that we took is going to be hidden on the inside and when we open our zipper there will be no raw edges inside of here and so all of our seams are hidden you can, I don't know if you guys can see here, but there, there is excess with that six inch strip. I did that on purpose, again, just to give you guys a little bit of grace when you go to trim this up. Um, it made it easier for me, and so I thought it would be easier for you to have that. So you can see that side is done. And then now we can go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. So let's just show you one more time. I have this zipper already ready to go. And so I'm going to just put that See, this one ended up wider. I don't know what I was measuring at home this weekend, you guys, but it's fine. <laughs> All right, so let's just uh, center this up. Actually, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna center this up and we're gonna trim it later because that will make it faster. So I'm just gonna eyeball this in the middle. That looks good to me. And then we're going to put our six inch strip on top. That way you guys know how forgiving this really is. And we're just going to pin one more time. And I am going to go ahead and move. See, we learn lessons as we go. I'm going to move that zipper head out of the way before I pin it too far. And then that way I know I can slide it up later. But at least I can get a good start. So do we have any questions, Liz, while I'm pinning this side? I think people are following along. We do know that folks are seeing that you could use jelly roll pieces left over Absolutely. you could use stash pieces we did use for in the beginning we used a charm pack we did and that was called it's the berries and so it has cute. this cute red and black theme um, but you can absolutely use a charm pack of just about anything because you only needed eight dark right. and, eight, and light. eight light to do the method to create the actual checkerboard so now the zipper is actually the genius of this because now you can hold all your pieces yes. in your game board and they don't get lost. Exactly. And they just roll up and you've got this fabulous, cuddly game board to play with yes. just about anywhere you go. Exactly. And like I said, it just reminds me of spending time with my grandparents um, and that is what inspired it. And so I'm just, I've had a, a really fun time working on this because it's just been very nostalgic for me. And so now I've got this all pinned in place and we're just going to zoom down the side with that quarter inch seam this little spot is wanting to shift so i'm just i'm going to take this pin out and just double check it make sure it's all staying where i want it there we go and it's okay to do that from time to time too, just to make sure everything is cooperating. And I'm getting closer to where that zipper head is. So I'm actually, now that I've sewn through here, I'm gonna take this pin out, flip this up and move it up out of my way before I get too close. Perfect, that one was much easier. And then we're gonna put that presser foot back down Whoops. Don't lose my pins on the floor. And we're just going to keep sewing. And while you're sewing, too, people are also talking about you could create 
a tic-tac-toe board. Yes. You could create a backgammon board. So absolutely let your creativity fly with this. It's a great idea. That is a fabulous idea. All right. So then we've got this side done. And again, it just folds back. And now our zippers are all lined and ready to rock and roll. This side you can see isn't even because I didn't trim that off exactly, but that's okay because now I can just use my long ruler and come back and trim all this up. I can even leave it like this when I quilted it. So let's talk a little bit about how I did quilt this since it has the zippers, you do have to quilt it yourself. Um, it would be a fun one to tie, but I used the same methods that we practiced um, a few videos back in our cheater panel um, when we learned a little bit about stitching in the ditch with our walking foot, that's what I did. And so I just followed um, my squares and did my, the whole thing, you know, I went up and down and then back and then I went all the way around the square and then again with um, the outside of that inner border. And then remember, I told you that we top stitched our zipper to kind of echo that. I went ahead and, and this is actually a quilting line that I did here, but it, it matches the top stitch that I did on the zipper. So this is actually quilted in place across the whole length. And then once I trimmed it up, I also took a basting stitch um, down both sides since those are open. I wanted it to be easier when I bound it. And so I just took nice big stitches and basted those in place and then attached my binding, binded it just like a normal quilt. It was super, super quick. Um, it's so fun and I'm so excited to take this home and play with the kiddos. You guys have any questions before we wrap up? So some folks are asking about how the pocket gets bound with the backing. Can you kind of talk us through Absolutely. a little bit? Absolutely. So because it just all folds over, um, you're just going to trim it like you would any quilt top. Um, like I said, I went ahead and took those basting stitches in the end because it is still open. But then once you attach the binding, you know, sandwich it with your batting and your backing just like you would any quilt. And once you attach your binding, it completely encloses that pocket. And so you don't have to worry about anything falling out. Um, nothing gets lost. It was honestly even easier than I thought it was going to be in my brain. It was not hard. <laughs> I promise you, um, especially once you just tack that in place, because otherwise it does kind of want to flop around a little bit but I just took nice big stitches. You don't even have to do that. You could just pin it when you're attaching your binding. It'll do the same thing, um, but just super, super easy. And then you've got this great place to store all of your chess or checker pieces and you're ready to go. And your batting, does it go all the way across the back? It does. The everything? batting goes the whole length. Okay. So it, there is batting behind the pockets because I wanted it to have that same stability that the rest of the project had. And then, you know, you can just roll it up be fun to put like a little tie on it so you could um, have it all all closed up but then you don't have to worry about your pieces falling out because they've got a home so super fun I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you will make some memories with your kids and grandkids like my grandpa did with me um, and I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you next Tuesday bye